Hi, it's Gordon here at Overlights, and I'm going to take you through the next part of working with a cue list. Up on my screen here, I've got the capture visualizer showing what my cue list is currently doing. If I use the cog icon on this screen to make it full size, you can see that there's a lot of detail inside this cue list. I'll go through a couple of, chat, a couple of these columns, let you get used to them, and then in the next video, we will go through some more advanced settings that we can use. The first four columns that we have inside this queue list, I can type in a delay time, a fade in time, a delay out time, and a fade out time. Cool thing here is I can also put myself in a fixed overlap for any particular queue that I want. If I type in a couple of delay times, I can select one or a number of these cells and use the numeric keypad to put in a delay time. Now, when I press go to fire this next cue, it's gonna wait three seconds and then it's gonna fade that cue in for me. Could be just the desired effect that you want. Could be quite good if you find yourself always pressing go a second or two too early. To amend any of these times, all you have to do is select one or a number of these cells and use your numeric keypad to type in a new value. If I click on the top of this column, I can select all of these cells at once. You can see there, I've just changed every single fade in time to two seconds. Link and link offset are two great columns that work together. If I select one or a number of these cells and have a look at my soft keys, you can see here I've got the option to link with the previous cue. If I do that, I'm gonna tap Q, one, enter, and then go so that I can fire my Q1. And you'll see that it's gonna wait two seconds and then it's gonna fire this Q. This one is gonna wait eight seconds because in the link offset column, I have got eight seconds written in there. It's then gonna fire Q3 for me. Q4, as you can see, still says wait for go in this link column. So it's not going to fire that cue. It's going to wait up until I press go. This is really useful as you can build up looks and you can build more complicated looks rather than you having to fire go, uh, tap the go button on every single cue. I can just put a with previous or an after previous in there. And in the link offset column, I can type in a particular number. Navigating around the cue list, is nice and easy. The dark blue bar lights up the cue which is next to go, go, and the light blue bar is the cue that you're currently in. I've got a previous step and a next step button on my console. So if I tap next step, it's gonna move this dark blue bar down one cue. Using this cue button, or on the consoles, you may find that it's called connect slash cue, I can type in a number. So if I say cue, and then eight, enter. You can see that it's moved that dark blue bar to Q8. It's not fired that Q straight away. It's gonna wait up until I press go. It's then gonna fire that Q for me. So I can navigate around nice and quickly and easily. Happens quite a lot during technical rehearsals. Somebody will say, jump to Q15 for me. I can tap Q, I can type in one, five, enter, and then I can press go as and when I'm ready for it. One of the other things that seems to be, have a lot of questions asked about it at the moment is auto load. What auto load does, as you can see in this example queue here, is it loads a specific queue. I can select one or a number of these cells and I can choose a playback. Rather than it bringing values into this queue, it's actually loading the information on here. So if I change this playback that I have called cyan pink, it's going to change all the information that's fired in these cubes. Auto load times is the next column, and this is where I can put a separate fade in time for this auto load, rather than it just paying attention to the fade in time over the entire queue. The final thing that I would like to show you in this video is because there's a lot of information when you start looking at queue lists on the Titan screen, we can make filters to make our lives easier and just show the information that we want. 
If you're on a console, you'll find that the console screen has a context menu just here. On this Titan 1 interface, you'll find that it's underneath these the icon with four lines. There's a button that says edit columns. Here now on my soft keys, I've got a setup where I can deselect any of these column titles that I would like. You can see that information is disappearing from the console screen. If I want to save this as a filter, I can tap record and I can tap this space on my console screen. Here you can see I've got a, now got a filter that says show all where I have none of these columns deselected. I've got one that just says show times. So I've just got time information there. And I've got that new filter that I've made, which just shows from the legend to the fixed overlap and the link weights. If you want to use the edit times button on soft key A of your console, I can select edit times, I can tap a key, and I can type in a legend, I can select a number, I can even choose a particular halo if I want. This has haloed the entire queue list for me, which can be really useful just to highlight it on the console screen. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will go through tracking and we'll go through tracking shapes as well.